do I? Oh, that. I've seen them before, that bright blue thing. There's one of the honeybees. Don't don't spray the honeybees. I didn't realize that was a bee or a honeybee. Yeah. I just saw a big bug coming at me. So I know what well, somebody know what in the world that is? Let us know. Man, I wish you guys could hear. I hope you guys can hear that. They're flying in and out of that corner. Man, they are active. This is a fairly dumb idea. Let's see what we can do. Um, I don't want to bust that transmission either. I need that, um, what do they call that, a hogs? Not a, the plate behind the bell housing, the plate that goes behind that bell housing that bolts to the trainee. I need that. We use that on our flathead conversions to put the uh, T5. I think it's T5, the modern S10 transmission, whatever that is, I can't remember. So I'm gonna have Steven do some videoing and see if we can get this out of here without me dying. I'm really struggling here because what I'd like to do is just hook a chain around that and this front bumper or the, get it picked up and hook it to the front axle. But I want to be able to run away in the skid loader. I don't want to be chained to the bee's nest. Uh, I don't know what the answer is there because this truck's been cut off behind the cab. And obviously it's not just going to... Looks like the fr end of the frame is right there. So it's not like it's just going to roll out of here. But, and I don't think I can... I don't think I can get underneath the front of it far enough to just pick it up. Well, I mean, not even that. It just... The pivot point is going to be that axle when I go to pick it up. And everything is behind that axle. If the bumper was chained down, I can pick the weight up. My forks ain't long enough to get back to a point where it's not going to be violently, you know, rocking the other way and pissing bees off. And we also have this foot tall stump that got left. You can see where a hitch of something was in there. Uh, that'll be a nice obstacle because it's just high enough to catch the bottom of the skid loader and get us hung out. So. Yeah, yeah, I saw the tree. Yeah. Let's get our trash out of here. Make sure that goes back in the truck, please. All right, well, I think I'll come in from this side. I want to clear some of this brush in front. I'll come in this side and get it popped up and see what happens. Yeah, I know I'm going to get stung, but... What's it gonna What's it gonna do for me? We don't have ice either. That's ice a, up with my thing that yeah, it'll be all right. Alrighty, I'm gonna get skid loader started.
<laughs> I didn't see him. <laughs> yep. Ow. No, I twisted my ankle. Well, that went about as well as we expected. Neither one of us got stung, but uh, as you can probably see, I don't know what uh, Stephen caught in the videos, but I don't run very well. I don't have very good control of my, uh, man, that thing followed us up here. I don't have very good control of my legs anymore after the uh, spinal cord issue. So running is generally not an option for me. Anyway, uh, back there in that opening is where the skid loader's at. The truck was parked about right here. We jumped in it and uh, of course we had the windows down. So about five of them got in there with us that we were swatting and acting like idiots at. Somehow in that mess, Steven pulled his shoulder out of socket. So I'm gonna get this thing strapped down real quick and I'm gonna take him to a doctor's office somewhere because he thinks he's ripped something in it. I'm not sure how he accomplished that run and I don't know if he, I don't, I don't know what happened there. So I gotta get this strapped down and get him to a doctor some sort. All right, got the truck strapped down best I could with the rear end that's not bolted in. Steven got out of the truck to attempt to help me, I guess, and uh, um, started leaning over and stuff, and you know, he's in excruciating pain, and uh, when he leaned over, he was messing with his arm, and it went back in on its own, so he, now he says he's good. Doesn't want to go anywhere, but he is not messing with no more bees. <laughs> I ain't scared. Somehow, neither one of us got bit or stung. Uh, literally, there was a stinger stuck in the case of the phone <laughs> when we got in the truck. So, uh, yeah. Didn't move the truck very far. And as I was pulling that dude out, I remembered that freaking transmission was underneath there, even though I just talked about it. I hope I didn't bust any of that. Uh, and we'll take a look here. We'll spin you guys see what we got going on well the good news is the transmission came up off the ground and uh is safe that's awesome i'm glad to see that i'll say i don't necessarily care about the rest of it just there's a plate that bolts in here that that aluminum bow housing bolts to that's what i want looking over there at the bees they're coming in and out of this bottom corner behind that seat i don't see much of them which is mind-blowing but man, they were on us. We ran to the truck, which is probably runs. A, yeah, runs a really strong word. Run is a really strong word for what I can do. I don't. I don't run. Uh, I just don't have that good control of my legs. Anyway, we got up out of the truck. Stephen was right behind me. How I beat him is beyond me. Um, but we literally had ten of the bees inside the truck with us and uh you can imagine how comical that would have been to watch it i don't know how much steven got of that on camera we'll see we'll be sure to include it if if he did i the stupid part of me really wants to keep working on getting this out because i'm running out of freaking time and uh well i'm an idiot i guess i, I just want it out of there so i can get it home i don't even know that i could get it on this load but certainly want to try. Hmm. I gotta figure out. I gotta figure out an idea here. What's up, people? We are back at the beehive truck. We've um, done hold of a lo local beekeeper. Amazingly, he literally lives three houses down from us, which we didn't even know that uh we didn't even know that he was into the bees so he's going he's getting geared up right now and he's going to take a look see what we got our our plan right now is and it's cooled off finally thank god so that should all be home uh that's the hopes um the plan right now is we're going to stuff the um hole that they're going in and out of with some blankets and stuff hopefully 
and get it plugged up and kind of hold them captive, if you will. We're putting them on lockdown. Um, I'm gonna come in here and possibly cut this, man, that is so weird to do. Cut this stump off and then I'm gonna get in here in the front of it with the skid loader and hopefully chain it to the skid loader so I can drag it out, whatever we gotta do there. And then I'm just gonna back on the trailer with the cab over and the skid loader all in one shot, strap her down and head home with it and then unload it. And it works out great because he lives three houses down. So uh, we can, uh, he can do it as his, as his schedule allows. I'm, I'm trying to get these things out. You know, obviously we're gonna help him with the power tools and the equipment to hopefully just pull that tank out and then he can just cut it up, whatever he needs to do. So that's the plan as of now. He's getting geared up and uh, gonna take a better look because we couldn't really get in there where they're at. They're right in this passenger side and the bottom and the tank. I don't know if we're gonna take the seat out or what What we're gonna to have to ultimately do to get them out of there. So we're gonna do whatever it takes to, to make it happen. But that's the plan as of now. Sugar water. I was gonna ask you what was in the bottle. So what's that? Some people yeah. use like smoke. Okay. To kind of calm them down, which we could do that too. What does the sugar water do? Sugar does water, they... you kind of miss that on them and it just kind of keeps them busy they'll start cleaning each other off and okay makes them preoccupied so right. they don't care about you as much yeah. i got gotcha. you yeah i looked into getting the gear and and buying the hat and the and just well wearing some thick gloves or whatever but i was like man i still don't know what i'm doing even if i buy the gear yeah Watch a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah, you become YouTube certified. And, and, and just do stuff like this, and you, that's the way you learn. Yeah. Uh, some of the stuff I've learned about the bees is White House on the Hill. They Seems have, like I've seen that. They, they're they on YouTube. They have a couple beehives and farm animals. Yeah. I started watching this guy, Dr. Leo Sharashkin. He's from Russia. Oh, boy. But now he lives uh, lives around the Ozarks. Yeah. And uh, so it's like a different, just a natural way of uh, beekeeping. Not all the chemicals. Yeah. Things like that. It's a different design. It's like a horizontal hive. Interesting. And it's insulated with uh, sheep's wool. Interesting. So. Definitely a more healthier option, it sounds like. I thought I'd try that first. A lot of them YouTube guys, they've tried natural beekeeping for 10 years and they just don't have any luck. Gotcha. They keep on dying and they have to start over. Yeah. In the spring. Let's take a look here. Right these well, holler at me if there's anything we can do. Yeah, just kind of keep your distance, be safe. Yeah. Normally I Well, that was my concern was that the whole bottom would be rotted out or something like that, you know, that would be completely impractical to secure. Right. Well, I was kind of hoping it'd be more rusted out to, to get them out. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just kind of hanging out here at the entrance. And I could stuff a little rag in there pretty easy. I wonder, wonder if we can get lucky enough that that's the only hole. Right. Is there a gas cap on the fill neck over there? Nope. So we'll want to, we'll want to cap that.
I still ain't seen them really hitting you, hitting your helmet or, or your whatever you want to call that, your hat. They're just kind of buzzing around me a little bit, but not bad. Okay. There we go. This might work better. Well, there's still some on the outside, but this is going to be closed off here. There's no way to tell how big the actual nest is, is there? Till we get her cut open. Right, you can hear them humming in there. They're they're pretty chill today. I imagine the weather's got them slowed down a little bit because in the when it's been hot the last couple of days, I mean you could hear this thing from 20 foot away just just blowing. Yeah, just vibrating away. Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. It's... Yeah, let's not have any surprise holes. <laughs> I'm gonna stick another little piece in there. I can hear them all the way over here. That's yeah. the nest, but over here too. I even got a little, uh, little tape I can maybe throw around there too. If it'll stick, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea, especially for the drive home. Yeah. So how does that work? If a, if a, say these ones are there on the outside and we go home, will they turn around and find a new they'll colony? They'll probably around this location for a while. Yeah, but eventually they'll probably find a new colony or something? Or? Yeah, eventually they'll take off or maybe land on a tree here and eventually they probably just die. Hmm, okay. Awesome, once you back up, buddy, they're starting to get a little bit more, more active for sure. Doesn't seem like they're trying to sting them or anything. Okay. That's pretty good. All right. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> Go on, Austin. If they're going to come after me, they're going to come after you. Well, that's all it takes to hurt. <laughs> Don't they dive bomb before I stay? They'll usually peg you in the head. They might follow me out here a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, they're starting to figure out something's going on here. Yeah, they they happy in the moment. I can throw a piece of tape over there too. Okay, we'll watch from back here. <laughs> So, Austin and I was watching apparently too close. I haven't got stung yet, but uh, had one chase us out here in the truck, which is probably 50, 60 feet away. He's still busting us he our heads, but uh, we're going to let him put some tape over that hole. And I don't know, maybe let him chill for a while. I don't know what the answer is. But, uh, yeah, I'm not about getting chased like that. I am too fat and slow for that stuff. Like I said before, I can't run worth a crap, so getting chased by bees is not not a good thing. Yeah, he's still up here flying around us. Let's stay back here, buddy. I was just getting where I could see it. Yeah. I heard him right. He said he does have the stuff to smoke them, so maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's what he's doing. I don't know. But I was gonna ask you what you burned, but it looks like you just got pine needles. Don't pine you? needles and a little bit of cloth, like a old jean material, or this will work. The tricky something. parts get these things lit and keep them lit. I gotcha. It seemed like it would draft very well like that. If 
pine needles make a nice faint white smoke. Yeah. So what exactly does the smoke do? Is it? It just kind of. Well, they say that they think there's going to be like a forest fire or something, so they'll start gathering up some honey to take off. Really. Yeah, maybe pull up and uh, get more straight with the pass. I'm not doing a big turn. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, the way you got it now, I got to come out and make a 90. Try to get it to where we're just kind of coming straight out. You can back, don't back in the skid loader, but you can back in there and then pull up a little bit. Okay. Just be, use your mirrors and be mindful of where you're turning. Don't jackknife it and smash my bumper. There's freaking one inside my bell. Uh-oh. You getting stung, are you? No. I just keep on it. I felt something by my ear earlier. I don't see right, nothing. I don't see nobody. Yeah. Okay. It's hard to not get paranoid, too. <laughs> yeah. They start buzzing your head and everything else. Yeah, my brother's. Got a little, just a bell and a hat. He's yeah. Got one too, but that's about all he wears. But he's had them inside, four or five inside your bell. No, thank you. Yeah. I got. Yeah, there's a. I see a sweat bee inside there. Well, maybe that's it. Yeah, let's see if we can get him out of there. Let me make sure. No, that's not a. That's like a horse fly or something. Oh. He's gone now. Good as we're going to plug her up as far as I can tell. Okay. I don't, at this point, I don't think they're going to let me get into the skid loader though. Yeah. I'm watching about 10 of them bounce off your, your head. Maybe you can. Yeah. I think you'd fit into this. Did you just call me fat? <laughs> you're a pretty, pretty stout guy uh Which yeah I, that sounds a lot better than just going at it without uh my my only concern is i would hate to accidentally rip that or something getting out of the skid loader yeah. let me ask you this what does one of them even cost uh, about 130 probably that's not as bad as i thought well worth not having a bunch of stings to the face right right that's worth it that's yeah a good one okay well, I would say let's give them a few minutes, or, or what's your opinion? Give them a few minutes and then see where they're at? Yeah. Do you want to take that stump out? Well, I was in there before with it there. If I come this way, where we're standing, um, it can stay. But I also don't want to be fighting these trees. It might be easier, and it might be quicker to cut that stump down. And come this way. I don't know how they'll react to the chainsaw, but it, it's 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 really crazy. I mean, you can see how much crap we've moved around here. There was farm equipment all around this thing, yeah. And you couldn't even remotely walk up in here. Huh. And that was the reason that stump is as high as it is, is there was a piece of farm equipment there that was over the top of that. We cut that off to get that right. um, planer or whatever it was over that. But um, I can buzz that off with the chainsaw real quick. That's definitely not a problem. I think that would make more sense and then try to bring it this way rather than fish through them trees over there that are tight. I'll stand right here and even put a little smoke on you. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I'll go get the chainsaw gassed up and um, 
and go from there. So, I'll be right back. I want you to stay well enough away. I know. No video work. Getting lit up, okay? Okay. And they do start getting you, go get in the truck. Yeah. Been stung before? Yep. Okay. Yeah. You smoked the snake out of the cab, it fell. I thought it was just a stick and then I see it slither away. Oh, a snake, huh? Yeah, it was a little baby gardener it looked like. Let me see the phone since I got this stuff on. I'll see if I can get it good. But it fell out like a stick. Yeah, it's a little cold for a snake. Let's see, since I got this get up on, if we can, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Probably a hundred of them are better. I'm not sure where else they could be getting up from. The whole bottom of that tank's probably gone, but we'll get them out of there eventually. First time I've got a chance to even look at the truck. She's pretty crusty, but definitely worth saving. Man, it's it's intimidating having them things just swarm you in your face even though they can't get to you they're still just right up in your grill what's that oh yeah yeah I'm going to set this down now once you come get it and take it to the truck. But I'm not going to hand it to you because these bees are following me. What I'm doing, I got my little air compressor hooked up over there. I forgot about these front tires leaking down. So we're trying to get these aired up because it's way too much weight, you know, out, out away from me. And uh, especially with the front tires flat. But what's happening is I'm trying to pick it up. This doghouse obviously isn't bolted on and it's falling down and catching the ground. I don't want to roll them fenders all up. So hoping I can get that aired up. Worst case scenario, 
um, I'm going to back back up in this little opening right here and do a circle and turn around and drag it out. And uh, that way at least the fenders are dragging the ground instead of digging in and getting wadded up. So that's the plan as of right now. Well, I'm glad you had an extra get up here. Yeah, I figured, uh, I was kind of thinking about that last night. It's like, well, I hope he can maybe fit into that. Yeah. Probably use it. As often as I get into these things, it's probably worth the investment for me. Because this is, this is like the fourth or fifth one of these trucks I bought that's got... The bees. Yeah, that's had bees in it. I, I can't hear you, buddy. He's he's stinging the phone. Just go, Austin. Not worth getting stung over. I said, just go on up there. It's not worth getting stung over. Well, yeah, we had their smaller version. And... Uh, it lasted about a week. Yeah. So we went to that one, and that one there, that one there is just freaking amazing. That's about two hundred bucks at Rural King. Wow. And I think it was like a hundred eighty dollars. Yeah. But just set what what air pressure you wanted at, and let it rip, and uh, stop automatically. Yes, it shuts off on its own. So I only had twelve pounds of air in it, so. I'm pretty pretty pleased with the um, minimal flats that we've had out here because like I said this is just an absolute dumping ground out here yeah. and we've actually only had two punctures to that same tire and plugged it and uh, but I figured I'd at least slit a tire out here and, yeah. and completely lose it but I got that one cut that's down there about where it touches the ground where it took a chunk out of it but it didn't cut through And there's some gnarly thorns in here. There's some, some thorns on these trees that are like that big. So. This weight from this truck is about all that little bump that must have handled it. Yeah, it doesn't help. It's so far out. Um, 26, 2,800 pounds is about all that is really designed for. And that's like at the extreme max. And that's, you know, supposed to be right up on it. But we abuse it <laughs> every freaking day. But. Uh, Looks like it's had some good use to it. That machine does not owe me a dime, that is for sure. I bought that probably probably close to 15 years ago, and it paid for itself in the first couple months of ownership. Wow. And uh, I don't use it all the time, but, man, it is handy when we do need it. Good enough. I hadn't noticed that before. That dude's got an internal cooling fan. Huh. Let's see where we're at over here. That one's good enough for now. It's at 45 pounds, so I'll call that good enough. They're all remaining about the same number. There's not like more of them. What's that? There's not more bees. They're kind of maintaining the same number. Uh, okay. So that's a good thing. They're still not happy. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm just thankful that none of them's found the uh, gap between the glove and the sleeve yet. Right. I'm going to set this here, Austin. Come up here and get it once we walk away. Actually, I'm going to set the phone there with it, too. It's still recording. Just pick it up, okay?
We made it back to the house without too much problems. Had a few pieces fall off that Doug stopped picked up for us, so it was good to have him fall us home. But uh, we're gonna get this thing unstrapped, get her unloaded, and try not to piss him off too much more. The this trailer is just due for retirement, so uh, it's gonna be interesting because we busted more decking on it, getting it loaded, um, get it unloaded, get it uncapped. We try to tape it up and stuff rags in it, all that crap. So we're gonna get it unloaded and then we get to around and run right after another car. So let's see what we can get her done and get out of here. To get it off, it's like the, the uh, uh, what actor was that? The fat guy in the little coat. Wanna... I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who you're talking about. The, the movie where the fat actor's like, fat guy in a little coat, and he blows the back of the guy's jacket. You don't know what movie I'm talking about? I'm not sure. <laughs> but that was pretty funny. You want to do it again? No. <laughs> I'm wanting to say Will Ferrell, but I know that's not right. I don't like him. I know I've heard it, but it's I don't... It's not that I don't like him. I don't think he's funny. He has to try to be funny. Will Ferrell's a guy on Saturday Night Live, right? Yeah, I think he started there. Yeah, he's not funny. Um, he was in Step Brothers and... Yeah, he's not funny. Um, dang, what is his name? I know people out there know what I'm talking about. All right, let's see how big of a mess we can make out of this. This thing was acting like it was running out of fuel when I loaded it. So we might be in trouble. Uh oh. That'd be fun to work on. So I'd try to fix this with this B thing on. <laughs> Part where I get a unplug the hope I don't find the uh, yeah, I got one buzz in my head now. Hopefully, they don't find the small 
cracks and like the gloves and all that stuff. I got one landing on my head right now. That is such a weird feeling just to stay calm and let them be on your head. I didn't think that out very well. Well, that's on the wrong side anyway, so that's okay. Well, it's fortunate I left that ratchet strap, but the way I strapped it, I'd have to lay on the ground to undo it. Well, that's hard to do one, ain't it? Man, who does this stuff? Oh, they sound super mad. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but they're not happy with me. That worked not at all. So, yeah, we'll start with just going ahead and pulling this rag out. Let's see anybody coming in and out of there yet. There's got to be... There's got to be more holes than that. Man, that's so intimidating. Especially considering my sleeve doesn't even reach my glove. There's a fat guy in the little coat thing again. Oh, that gas. Oh, yeah. Woo! I don't care what you say, suit or not, that is, that is intimidating. Yeah. Uh-huh. They're super mad. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's like... They're all over me. I'll try to walk back up here just for... I hope you all appreciate this entertainment purposes. Good gravy. They're hitting me like crazy. Okay. I can't do this. That's too much of a mental game. Thousands of them dudes on me. Woo! I don't know what the answer is to make them stop. <laughs> I don't have the smoke. So, didn't really think that through. I shouldn't have went up there. They're not going to leave me be. Dude, like, I'm nowhere near the truck, and they ain't giving up. They are pissed. They're trying like crazy to sting the phone, my head. They're like bouncing off my hand at 900 mile an hour. But I don't know how to get them to stop. We had smoke when we was there. Huh? Yeah, me too. I can hear them good. But... As long as I don't find the gap, my, my, yep, that gap. Um, didn't think this through. Man, I am paranoid they're going to get in my gloves. Because my, this gloves, or this thing's for midgets, this jacket is. Um, short of literally setting something on fire, I don't know how to get them to stop. They're, they're on me like stink on, or, woo, flies on stink. Um, hmm. I'm not real sure what to do here. I don't know how much of that you guys can see, but. Huh. Hi. What? Those are towels, not, or uh, sheets and stuff. They're not towel, uh, paper towel. Yeah, they got enough out to be pissed off. Um, I don't know, short of setting something on fire and walking into the smoke. I mean, I can, I know if I walk, they're going to follow me. Right now, I'm going to walk in the shade because I'm burning up. 
Definitely not one of my brightest moments. I don't know how much of these things you guys can see. Um, I don't know, 75 feet from the truck and I still have, I don't know. Well, they just thin down a bunch. What? Huh? Probably see like three. Well, it sounds like there's 8,000 of them, okay? I walked far enough away, maybe it's thrown off. I don't, I don't know. One's too many. Get a uh, driver's door in my truck. There's a lighter. Set that grass over there where my dad's Jeep truck used to be. I still have, I don't know. She says she sees three. It feels like there's three million of them things. It's not as bad as it was, but I don't have her set. <laughs> there's a, uh, uh, we have my dad's truck out here, J J4000 truck, uh, where we've mowed around it. There's a ton of dead grass, so I'm having her set that on fire. Did you find some? They getting you? Set that, yeah, set that grass on fire. If I go over there, set that big pile on fire, not that little stuff. Yeah, I'll say if I walk over to you, I'm just going to bring what I got with me. So when, when Doug was up there, he was um, putting pine needles in his little smoker thing and uh, creating, you know, I, I've read online that you need natural smoke. Sweetie, can you come to this side, to the left? And uh, there's a slight breeze that's going that way. They're thinning out now. You might be a redneck if you set your yard on fire to escape bees. That's hot, and that really stinks. Yeah. Ugh. Grass. Ugh. That stinks. There's some smoke. That stinks a lot less. Uh, yeah, he's still in your hair. Stop. Stop. You're going to get stung. Look at me. Right? Ow. Yeah, you don't think ow when he stings you. He's dead now. You got your own natural beekeeper thing on. I already stink, so might as well indulge in it good. Blah. Blah. I wouldn't follow me either. Blah. That was horrible. But I don't hear any more buzzing, so. Dumb idea. Leave it to me. Well, I'll get back with you guys whenever we get Doug back over here to get this thing out of the truck. For now, I'm going to jump in my truck and leave. I'm going to let the bees be.